Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. I had a fascinating conversation with someone today and I, I love those conversations. Conversations that challenge and stretch your beliefs about things, conversations where you learn something about something or about someone or how something's done. And I just wanted to share something, something I've actually, a belief I've held for a long time, but something that came up in the conversation that I had today. So we were talking about all sorts of things. We were talking about how being a white male in this world at the moment is not always that easy. We were speaking about being a single mother and the perceptions of society on being a single mother and how friends, couples react to being a single mother. But I'm actually not here to talk about any of those things. What I want to talk about is about feminism actually and about the movement to equalise male and females both in the workplace and society and everywhere else. And I suppose there's a lot of radicalisation around feminism and a lot of people have different points of view around the subject and as a woman I feel it's something I can speak about. There's a lot of um, different cultural perspectives that I don't speak about purely because I haven't experienced them personally but being a woman in society is something I can talk on and being someone who has two sons I'm very aware of how society and this might this is a very big generaliz generalization but how it seems to think that it's the man's, the male in society that is responsible for how women are treated and that it's men that need to correct the error. And this is where I say something different, what, something I believe something different. So what I believe is something that Gandhi said many, many years ago, and that's to be the change. And I believe what needs to change is how women see themselves because how we see ourselves is how other people treat us or how we allow other people to treat us. And I don't believe that anything will change until we change, till we see ourselves differently. And one of the examples that came out of the conversation I was having this afternoon was that in a board meeting, and this is super generalization, and I know there's many men and many women that are very different, so please don't. <laughs> say that I'm presuming that all men behave this way and all women behave the way I'm about to explain. But if there's a man that wanted a decision to be made and a decision to be made quickly, and if the woman, there was a woman at the meeting who wanted to go around and ask everyone's opinion and collate the information and then make a decision based on that, that the woman would be disparaged for her methodology. And this is obviously in a very patriarchal organisation. And I know that there are many that aren't like that. And what I said is that the only time that that would matter is if the woman didn't believe in herself. Because I've been in situations where the woman strongly values and believes in herself, and it wouldn't matter what anyone else said, she'd know and trust her own process. And when that's the case, then she holds a great power. And the meeting would go very differently to if the woman didn't value and believe in herself and doubted herself. And if the man in this scenario criticised her methodology because he wanted a quick answer and a quick resolution, she might not necessarily have the courage to push forward with the convictions of including everybody's opinion in the decision making. And this again, I'm going back to what Gandhi said, and that's be the change. Because until she changes, nothing will change. So if she doesn't value herself and is, doesn't have self-belief, then she will allow people to walk all over her and to suppress her opinion and her idea of how things should be done. But if she does believe in herself and she does value herself, then the scenario is very different. She doesn't necessarily have to make the man wrong in this scenario, but she can stand up for herself and say that there are different ways of doing things and continue to do it her way. And in the discussion that I had earlier today, we also spoke a lot about culture. And I've been quite blessed in some ways in that I've lived in different cultures in my lifetime. I've spent a lot of time in Southern Africa, I've spent a lot of time in England, and I've even spent time in the Middle East. And this has allowed me to step out of the society I most likely would have spent my whole life in in the UK and to see things from different perspectives. 
And I think this has allowed me to interact differently with people than I would do if I had lived my whole life in one society. Now, an example for this is in my early 20s, I worked at Superdrug Head Office and I was obviously quite, well, not obviously, but I was quite junior at that stage. And I remember being in a meeting and my manager at the end of the meeting, she happened to be a woman, um, asked a number of us in the meeting, but from our, our meeting was a, a whole load of different sections. So there were a number of managers and a number of subordinates. And she asked her section after the meeting how they thought that she handled that meeting. Now, I mean, my memory might be wrong, but in my memory, <laughs> um, the other subordinates told her what she wanted to hear. And what I told her was what I believed the truth to be. I didn't, wasn't nasty, but I was just quite factual about it. And I don't think there were many people of my age that would have done the same. And I think the only reason I did was because of the culture I was brought up in in Botswana growing up. Um, we used to spend an inordinate amount of time with adults when I was a child. Um, not just our own parents, but lots of other adults. And I think it made me comfortable with people that were older and in different positions and different hierarchies to me. So I tended to see people more of an equal rather than in a hierarchical structure. And I say this because what happened in this scenario was that she really valued what I had to say to her. And subsequently, whenever we had a meeting together, she would come to me and ask for my opinion of how she thought she handled something or didn't handle something or whatever else, because I was truthful to her. And how this fits into what I was saying about feminism is that it's that internal self-belief that that is what needs to change. Because when that does change, when we start being true to who we are, then we start changing the lives around us. We start creating possibilities that weren't there before. And we trust that our way of doing things has value, that our way of doing things um, can bring good and can change things in the world. But it's not for men to change how they're doing things, because why should they if it's working for them? If something doesn't work for us as women, it's us that needs to change. And we don't have to be aggressive about it and we don't have to fight and make other people wrong. All we need to do is start to believe in ourselves and value ourselves. Not value the values that men have, but value the things about being a woman because they're really quite fantastic things. Our emotional empathy, which we naturally, and this is not all women, and I am generalizing hugely here, that women generally have, can be incredibly powerful. Our intuitiveness can be incredibly powerful. Empathy, and a numerous other characters that are classed as feminine characters. And as I said, I know that they're not all feminine characters. You can have women that have masculine characters and men that have feminine characters, and they're all over the place. But in a massive generalisation, we need to start valuing the things that make us women because they actually are incredibly powerful and they're even more powerful when we have self-belief and when we don't have to fight to put them forward, but we can just stand firmly in them because we know that they are true. Now, in this particular episode, I have been going on a lot about women, purely because I am a woman, I have that perspective and I can talk on it. But what I'm talking about doesn't just pertain to being a woman. It can go into all sorts of categories. It can take sexism out of it completely. And it can be down to an individual believing in themselves and valuing themselves in any scenario. And it changes. It can be you're being treated in a certain way in some scenario and you don't like it. Instead of making the people treating you that way wrong, if you look to change yourself, by changing yourself, they have to change because they can't treat you the same way you've been allowing them to treat you. And as I mentioned before, there's a very a big, it's not a subtle thing, there's a big difference between, between changing and expressing that change through anger and changing and expressing that different way of being through confidence and certainty and deep peace and, con and connectedness. And it's that deep peace and connectedness that being so comfortable and true to what it is that you've changed into or what you've decided to stand in that is incredibly powerful. If you come from that position in anger and you're making the other party wrong, then you're going to hit a lot of resistance because nobody likes to feel wrong. And if what I'm saying resonates with you and you feel that there's a scenario you're in where you are now looking at it and thinking you need to change, just remember how it feels to be made wrong 
because that's how you're making someone else feel if you take it in anger. And again, as I said, you will hit resistance and those people will then push against you and make you even more wrong and you'll end up with an argument or a, a battle on your hands. So it's about changing in a way that is easy, is connected, is grounded and a way that you can stand in it absolutely solidly. And it doesn't matter what anyone else does or says, you know it to be absolutely true. I've really loved sharing this with you. Um, I hope you understand that obviously I'm generalising massively when I've been talking today and that there are many variations on this theme. But I hope there's something that you'll walk away with that you can take out and use in your own lives. Um, as usual, I've got lots of um, links and connections in the show notes below to my coaching, my online courses. Um, I'm going to be doing a monthly Ho'oponopono clearing session. If you're interested in that, the first one's going to be on self-belief, strangely enough, which is what I've been talking a lot on. Um, and I'd love to see you and uh, love for you to come along and join me on that. And the link for that is also in the show notes below. Have a fabulous week and so much love from me to you. And I'll see you again next week. Bye bye.